All right. Why is wrestling the dominant grappling system in mixed martial arts? Why is wrestling the dominant grappling system in mixed martial arts? And it is. And I'm not going to uh, uh, belabor the issue and waste time talking about something that if people were not in denial and would just see, uh, they would know this. If Daniel Cormier, uh, T.J. Dillashaw, D.J. Johnson, uh, uh, Demetrius uh, Johnson, uh, um, Tyron Woodley, Kamaru Usman, Henry Cejudo, if all of the people who are primarily wrestlers, right, and all that BJJ stuff that they have ranking, they have ranking in BJJ because they were good wrestlers. Okay, that's that's simple. I've posted so many videos pointing that out, and that's a fact. All right, if the amount of great fighters in the, in the history and currently uh, were uh, were BJJ artists, right, as compared to wrestling, no wrestler in his right mind would deny that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was the base of mixed martial arts. No wrestler could do that. And, and, and for me, be called insane and be called sane. Fact of the matter is, it is obvious. And there is irrefutable evidence, not evidence, irrefutable evidence to anyone who is sane that wrestling is the superior grappling method in mixed martial arts. Now, the question comes from a lineal champion, okay? Lineal champion. And I want to thank him for uh, this question because I love wrestling. Wrestling is my first love. Um, I'm known for boxing, known for talk to talk about uh, karate, but wrestling is uh, what I was best at, according to those people who have seen me wrestle in, in my youth and, and training karate and boxing. Um, so I'm going to point out why wrestling is dominant. And I want to say this to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists. I am not saying that you cannot do these things. You can up your training in the same way wrestlers do it, and you will be five times better than you are now not using these particular methods or not taking what I'm saying and then use this uh, to your advantage. I also want to say to you Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, practitioners that many of you have been hurt by the death of Halls Gracie. And I will put the, a video that I did on Holes Gracie some time ago um, in the link, in the, description, uh, in the description box. Link on, right? Holes Gracie was disowned by Helio Gracie and other members of the Gracie family. Now, there are people who want to keep this, you know, this, this nonsense going. Oh, well, they talk about Holes Gracie. They talk about how much they love Gracie. I know. I know. Before the UFC ever came about, I knew what was going on with the Gracies out in California, with Art Davies and Horry and Gracie getting things together, all right? I knew about those things, all right? Why? Because I started training when I was nine years old. I started training actually in 1970, 1970, okay? I'm collecting magazines. I'm hearing about what's going on in the martial arts world by 1974, okay? 74, okay? This is not a mistake, 1970. Four. One less than eight, one more than seven, okay? Or one more than six, okay? So, 1974. So, I know what's going on. No, the Gracie family had issues with Holes Wrestling. He, they had major issues with Holes Wrestling, okay? Major. So, if Holes Gracie had lived, Gracie Jiu Jitsu would be much further than it is now. So I am not saying that these things I'm going to talk about in regards to wrestling are things you can't do. What I am saying is that if you don't do them, then you will continue to fall behind wrestling in all sincerity in mixed martial arts. Okay, so I am going to talk about my personal observations, why, from my wrestling experience, why wrestling uh, surpasses uh, BJJ uh, in mixed martial arts. Um, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you why the rules of wrestling, of competitive wrestling, actually uh, help to make the transition uh, easier to MMA. Okay, first of all, wrestling is objective-based. 
it's objective based. So what do I mean by that? You have technique in wrestling, but it is more of a template. It's more of a template. It is not some, you know, rule that you must absolutely follow. All right. Whereas BJJ is very high on how. Very high on how. Whereas wrestling is high on what? Okay, getting it done. So to give you an example uh, from uh, my own personal teaching experience, uh, very quickly, a niece of mine had a, a boyfriend who was a good wrestler, but he kept losing to one individual, kept losing to this individual all the time. Two straight years, he's wrestled this guy three, three times a year, and he's losing to this guy every time he wrestles him. Okay. Now, here's the thing. At first, my niece said, you know, my uncle can help you. Uh, he was a wrestler. He teaches wrestling. You know, he loves to teach wrestling. Not enough people, not enough black people in particular, you know, come in and, 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 and want to wrestle, right? He, I think he can help you. Well, her boyfriend, you know, macho, you know, type of kid, you know, his so-called alpha male, you know, ah, no, no, no. But finally, he's humiliated against this same guy. Then he comes in to see me on one Saturday. So I tell him to bring a friend. He calls me ahead of time. I say, bring a friend. He doesn't have to wrestle. Just bring him because I need to find out something. The kid comes in, and I ask him, I said, you know, what is your favorite move? He said, single leg, okay? And you can't win with, you're not winning with the single leg. You're not locking the single leg in. It's not helping you in, the, in these matches with this guy. He says, no. So I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to do the single leg. I want your friend to move around, right? Try to defend against the single leg, right? And I want you to get the single leg. He gets the single leg one time. He gets the single leg. Now, follow me here. Get out your pens, pencils, whatever you use. Take notes because this will help you with your BJJ. It will help you with your grappling, right, and wrestling too. It will help you, and it's free, all right? So what happens is he grabs his kid's leg, his friend's leg, but he grabs it, and then a second later, he makes sure his head is outside, okay? He makes sure that when he grabs his leg, he grabs the leg first from outside, Right? And then he climbs up the, the leg of his, of his friend to make sure his head is on the outside and tight to his friend's side. Okay, That split second allowed his friend to turn away and get out, to get out and escape that single leg. Then I see what the problem is. He's more worried about the technique of the single leg than just capturing the leg. At that point in time, I told this guy, I told this kid, I said, what I want you to do is I want you to capture that first leg. I don't care if you use the front leg. I don't care if you use your front hand. I don't care if you use your back hand. Left or right, it doesn't matter to me. I want you to don't worry about technique, not to worry about technique, just capture that front leg. That's all. Just capture the front leg. That's all I want you to do. When you capture the front leg, put it down. For one straight hour with maybe a couple water breaks, maybe two water breaks, because I don't believe in a great deal of breaks. If you're tired and you're fighting in the street, then you're not going to get a break, right? All right, so I don't believe in a lot of breaks. So I have this kid constantly trying to capture this guy's, this kid's leg, not worrying about technique, just grabbing that front leg, whether it's with the left hand, whether it's with the right hand. Don't turn a pipe. Don't turn a corner, right? Don't do any of that. No inside trip, no outside trip. Not to single to high crotch, not single to, not single to the double. Just capture the leg and put it down. That's all we drill on. That's all we drill on. That's it. The next time he wrestles this guy, he slaughters him. Two story. The next time he wrestles his nemesis, he slaughters him. He's scoring constantly with single legs. Constantly with single legs. That his opponent spent more time on the mat than he, stood, than he, uh, than he uh, uh, spent on his feet. Why? Because objective. Don't worry so much about the technique. The technique will come. But the objective is what is most important. In wrestling, it is the obje objective that is most important. There is techniques shown, but the technique is a template. That's it. It's a general rule to follow. With BJJ, the reason why, and it's ridiculous, people say 10 years to get a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. This is that utterly ridiculous. If it takes you 10 years to get a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, either your teacher cannot teach, and I'm saying it, either he cannot teach, or he's milking you for the money. Either he can't teach, or he's milking you for the money. Okay? Wrestling is objective-based. Get the job done. No matter how you get it done, get it done.
right? Whereas BJJ is more technique based and too often people who train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu are more concerned with the how than the what. Next, in wrestling, tempo increases when you develop tactile sensitivity. When you develop tactile sensitivity, in other words, being able to predict the defense or attack of your opponent, defense or offense of your opponent, right? The vulnerability of your opponent, right? Through tactile. Chi Sao um, has that in, in Wing Chun. Um, Kaki, hands in Goju, same principle, right? But in grappling, essentially what we're talking about, in grappling, essentially what we're talking about is developing tactile sensitivity, right? The ability to predict defense and offense, right? Attack and defense. Okay, now in wrestling, a beginning wrestler will start off fairly slow. They don't really know how to do things, right? And there is a minimal template for how, but they start off fairly slow. But as they develop a certain feel, certain feel for techniques, and they're able to bodily, bodily through sensitivity, predict defense and offense, predict what an opponent is trying to do by what their opponent may grab or the way the opponent may move, right? Once they do that, then the speed of their training goes up. So as they develop tactile sensitivity, the speed of their grappling goes up. So you will have two collegiate wrestlers or two high-level wrestlers going at it very fast, very quickly, all right? Because as they develop tactile sensitivity, their speed enhances, they go up. Excuse me, all right? It, it goes up, okay. Now, if you look at BJJ, this does not happen nearly as much as it does in wrestling. This is why you will have two black belts. Watch it. I'm telling you. I'm not lying to you here. Watch it. You will have two black belts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, right? They will be rolling at a snail's pace. Now, you can tell me. You can justify this. You can justify that. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your teacher has told you. When you are a black belt and you are rolling at the same pace as you did when you were a blue belt, something is wrong. This is why you get two black belts, and they're, they're rolling, and neither one is overwhelmed. They're both canceling each other out. Why? Because they're moving at such a speed that it's extremely easy to predict the next move. They're moving so slow, it's extremely easy to predict the next move. There is no grappling system, no grappling system where when it is fully developed based on a tactile sensitivity, when the tactile sensitivity is developed, there is no grappling system that starts to wrestle fast or starts to grapple fast where one is not overwhelmed quickly. If you look at wrestling, one is overwhelmed quickly. One is thrown down quickly. One is pushed out off the mat quickly. One is pinned quickly. Look at sumo. They end quickly, right? Judo ends quickly. Why? It's not because both opponents are not good. It's because one has developed such tactile sensitivity to such a degree, to such a degree, they're moving steps ahead of the other one, ultimately dominating the other one. When you see two high-level black belts, it is the most boring thing I've ever seen. Two high-level black belts going at each other at a snail's pace, the same way they did when they were blue belts. Why? Because to the degree that they develop their sensitivity, the rolling does not get more aggressive. To the degree that they develop their, sen their tactile sensitivity, the rolling does not get faster. To the degree that, the roll that their sensitivity is developed, the rolling does not get more ballistic. So what you end up having is someone who was just as passive at, as a black belt as he was when he was a blue belt. Rolling just as slow at black belt as he did when he was a blue belt. As you, as you acquire sensitivity, tactile sensitivity, the ability to predict what is going to happen in a grappling match, as you develop that, then it only stands the reason that you, the, speed, the, 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 the speed and the aggression in which you grapple should increase. BJJ does not have that. Wrestling does. Lastly, the point system of wrestling. The point system of wrestling encourages certain things that enhance your chances in mixed martial arts. One, the point system is two points for takedowns. Two points for takedowns. You're trying to take the individual down, right? You're trying to aggressively pursue a takedown. Two points for takedowns. That helps in mixed martial arts. One point for escapes. So you get a point for escaping, right? From the bottom to the top, escaping out of a lock, 
escaping uh, from uh, a, 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 a takedown, one point for escaping. Two points for reversals. So you come from the bottom to the top. Again, this helps in the street. If you have to do that in, when you're in your training to win, it's going to only help you in the street. It's going only, only, only going to uh, uh, translate well into the street, into uh, mixed martial arts. When you get two points for reversals, right? You get three points for a near fall, which is almost having the opponent pinned down, one shoulder down, right? Um, shoulder blades uh, down for a couple seconds, but not enough to warrant uh, a pin, but a near fall, right? You get two to three points for that. Now, penalty points. You get penalty points. Well, you get penalty points for not being aggressive. You get penalty points for running off the mat, for leaving the mat. You get penalty points, of course, for illegal, um, for illegal, uh, uh, illegal shots. So we won't go that much into that. But you get penalty points. All right, for not being aggressive. The reality is this. Wrestling is the most dominant grappling method in MMA. It is. And the reason is it's objective-based. To run it back, to summarize, it's objective-based. Getting the job done without being so bogged down in this technique thing. Technique is used as a template. Technique is used as a general rule to follow. It is not one that you religiously follow. What you need to do, what you do in wrestling is it is based on the results, more than how you get the results, right? BJJ, not so. The tempo of wrestling increases. It increases as you strengthen your tactile sensitivity, all right? The ability to predict defenses and offenses, it increases. Right? So you're going faster as you develop the ability to, to, to predict the defense or offense of your opponent, what your opponent is vulnerable to, what you are vulnerable to, what you need to do, and what you don't need to do. Once you are able to foresee and forecast what is happening in a grappling match, then your grappling becomes more aggressive, it ultimately becomes faster, and you're able to better dominate your opponent. Right? This happens in judo, happens in sumo, happens in wrestling, happens in almost everything, every grappling art except Brazil in jiu-jitsu where the passive where the rest where the rolling is simply too passive at black belt almost as passive at black belt as it is uh, at blue belt um increases in the wrestling system the wrestling system in high school in college and en encourages through its point system uh what translates well into mixed martial arts again to summarize you get two points for takedowns one point for escapes two points for reversal they're very important, coming from the bottom uh, to the top. Um, three to four, uh, two to three points for a near fall, which is almost a pin, all right? Having them in a certain position with their back down uh, where they can't escape for less seconds than would constitute a pin, but it is still something that gets two to three points, all right? And you also get penalty points, right, for things that... Uh, you know, that you may do that you shouldn't be doing or whatever. But the main things we want to focus on are two points for takedowns, one point for escapes, two points for reversals, two to three points for near pins. Okay? And if you don't take anything from this video, take these two things from this video, right? Wrestling is objective-based. All right? So the technique is only a template as a general rule of file. It is it follow. It, you do not get bogged down. Your mind does not get clouded by how to, how to, how to. Except what you do is uh, in replace of just get the job done. This is why wrestling, one of the main things that happens when a BJJ artist goes up against a wrestler in MMA is the wrestler is always at a point before BJJ gets there. They cut out the middleman, so to speak, by getting to that point while the BJJ -er is still worried about technique, is still concerned with, do I put my arm here? Do I put my head here? Do I put my leg there? The wrestler has already gotten to the point, right? And is starting to dominate. Tempo must increase. Once you develop tactile sensitivity, then you must increase your, spe your, your speed, the speed of your rolling. You must increase the, the, the aggression of your rolling, all right? There's no other way to do it. And uh, certainly uh, the point system for BJJ uh, should be one that is more conducive to MMA and more conducive to uh, reality. So that is why wrestling dominates BJJ and, and will until BJJ instructors uh, start getting themselves together and continue with what would have likely been Holes Gracie's legacy. All right, my name is Save Carmen, Walking Encyclopedia of Martial Arts. See you next video.